Hello guys, welcome back to Maison African Motives, Steel on Engineering Science N1 Electricity. Uh, we have got the person February 2022 that we are going to focus on revising persons on electricity. So we are given on 10.1, give two examples of conductors. All right, so this typical person we talked about previously. So we have got a lot of conductors that we can uh, list, uh, we can talk of silver, we can talk of copper, uh, we can talk of aluminum. So uh, there are so many ways, there's so many that we have. So uh, let us list as many as we have. So on the comment section, let us add more examples that we have of conductors, okay? Uh, remember these are actually materials which conduct electricity, there is flow of current, all right. Name, on question 10.2, name each of the following circuit symbols. Okay, so 10.21, uh, what is the presentation of this symbol? So this is a resistor, guys, okay? Uh, so that's a resistor here, all right? So we've got a resistor, okay? On 10.22, we are given a combination of a cell and a cell. So this is a battery. So we are now having a battery here. Then the V in this circle, I talked about this previously, that's a voltmeter here. So if there is A inside, it's an ammeter, but this one, there's a V, so that's a voltmeter, okay? Uh, then on 10.3, we are given that the element of an electric kettle is a resistance of 13 ohms and a voltage of 220 volts. Calculate the current through the element, all right? So take note from our Ohm's law that current is equivalent to voltage over resistance. So we can just take that advantage. We have the voltage of 220 volts over the resistance of 13 ohms. All right, so if we are to divide 220, divide by 13, we are going to obtain a decimal, uh, 16,92307 and so forth. So this is going to be uh, nine, two, three. Remember, this is current, which is measured in amps. So be very careful uh, on the units there. The unit of measurement for current is amps. All right, on 10.4, we are now given that three resistors, 16 ohms, 24 ohms, and 31 ohms are connected in parallel. Uh, if you had to check this question, it's a repetition. We did these, the same values that you see here from another person, but anyways, we are going to redo this. So they are connected in parallel. So the question is for us to calculate the total uh, resistance of the circuit, all right. So remember that if you are dealing with uh, resistance in parallel, we are going to use the formula. Uh, so this is 10.4, one over RT is equal to one over R1 plus one over R2 plus one over R3 and so on. So these are three resistors. So we're going to have one over RT, which is one over 16 plus one over 24 plus one over 31, okay. So if you are to add this properly, uh, let me share the whole screen so that we can have our calculator. So that's here. We are going to have one over 16 plus one over 24. That's one over 24 plus one over 31 like this. All right, so this is 203 over 1488. So we're going to obtain 203 over 1488. All right, so now to find the resistance, because this is one over RRT. For you to find the resistance, you divide by one. So it's one over, you, you okay? It's one divided by this. So one over this, we are going to have the inverse of, one over RRT, which is RRT. Then one over this is the inverse, which is 1,488 over 203. But on your calculator, you can just do this. One divide by answer. Then you've got your decimal here, uh, which is 7,3300, which is 7,33. So this is 7,33 ohms. All right, so this is resistance. Uh, that is measured in ohms. All right, so that was question 10.4. We move on to question 10.5. So on question 10.5, we are now given, explain 
why the length of a conductor influences its resistance. Explain uh, why. Okay, so this is what we have. Remember that resistance is equivalent to rho L over A like this. This is the formula for resistance if you're given the type of material, the length and the area. So as you can see, length is affecting the resistance. But how is it so? All right, so we can say from this part, uh, the longer the conductor, the higher the resistance, all right? It can actually affect, or we can say the increase in length affects the, the what? The resistance. If you increase the length, you increase because these are directly proportional. Length and resistance, they are directly proportional. So the moment you increase the length, which is the conductor, you increase the resistance, okay? The same way, the moment you reduce this length, you are reducing the, the resistance. So we can conclude that the longer the conductor, the higher the resistance, all right? The shorter the conductor, the lower the resistance. Why? Because resistance and length is directly proportional. If you move on to the cross-sectional area, the moment you increase cross-sectional area, resistance decreases. If you decrease cross-sectional area, resistance increases So because it's inversely proportional. Okay, on 10.6, we are given, if the temperature of a material like uh, backlight rises, what will happen to its resistance? Okay, we are referring to the, to the resistance when the temperature is rising. All right, so this is a material uh, whereby the resistance reduces, like it's inversely proportional. So the resistance is going to, to decrease, all right? 10.7, uh, we are given that an LED lamp, yes, the following printing on it. So that's an LED. So we are given uh, the rating, that is the voltage and also the power rating. On 10.71, calculate the current flowing through the lamp, all right? So from the voltage and the power that we have was we are given voltage and we are given power. How can we calculate current? Taking note that we know that voltage, uh, that power, sorry, is equivalent to the product of voltage and current. So to find current, we can simply divide by the voltage, by the voltage both sides. So current is equivalent to power over voltage. That is the power of 220 over the voltage uh, sorry, the power is not 220, but the power is 16. So this is 16 over the voltage 220. So never make a mistake like what almost uh, done there. All right, so uh, from our calculator, in this case, uh, let's see what we have. If we divide these two, 16 divided by 220, we are going to obtain 0 0.72, 727 seven, and so on. So this is going to be seven is going to change two into three. That's 0, 0.073. And this is current, which is measured in amps. All right. Then after calculate the resistance of the lamp. So we can calculate resistance from current and voltage, or we can calculate from power. Remember, power can be taken from this formula. Uh, if you have got voltage and resistance, we can take that power is equivalent to, so this is 10.72, power is equivalent to V squared over R. So to find resistance, we can cross multiply, that's PR is equal to V squared, then we divide by P and P. So that means resistance is equal to V squared over P. From your mathematics guys, you can play around, I know. All right, so we can have this formula, therefore we can substitute to calculate our resistance V, we have put our voltage, which is 220 power 16. So this is 220 over 16. So we're going to have 220 squared over 16. That is going to be the resistance, all right? So from our calculator, this is 220 squared divided by 16, which is 3025, uh, all right? So we're going to have our resistance all right, as 3025 ohms. All right, so that's our resistance. All right, so let's check uh, the question again. All right, sorry for that. Sorry for that, guys. We want this part here. Uh, if we are to check back uh, on the question, I want to see. All right, 
So that was the resistance, okay? Then 10.73, the heat. Now we are asked to calculate the heat energy of the lamp for five minutes, all right? So remembering that, okay, I can even utilize this space here. So take note that we know that heat is equivalent to power times time. So that is power times time. So we have the power here, which is already in watts, which is 16. So you simply multiply this with the time, which is measured in seconds. So in this case, our time is minutes. So convert this to second, one minute is equivalent to 60 seconds. So we are going to multiply by 60. So that's five minutes times 60 like that, okay? So everything, if you multiply properly, you are going to obtain uh, 4,800 joules. So this is 4,800 joules, which is in kilojoules, if you divide by 1,000, that's 4,8 kilojoules. So if you want to divide, uh, if you want to convert to kilojoules, that's what you can actually do. All right, so that was question uh, 10.73. On 10.8, draw a neat labeled sketch of a magnetic field around a current carrying a solenoid. Okay, so we need uh, a sketch, all right? So I'm going to show you what your diagram was supposed to be like. I hope you saw it while well, I was moving this. Okay, so this is what you're supposed to have. Uh, that is three marks for that, okay? Uh, I hope the answer, we already saw it, okay? 10.9, uh, give two uses of an electromagnet okay your theory guys so that was 23 marks 23 marks everything on person 10 okay what are the uses guys of electromagnet we can use this in relays i mentioned these uh points before we can use this in relays we can use this in electrical bells uh electrical bells we can use this in uh electrical motors we can have uh, electrical motors, all right? We can use this in uh, loudspeakers. So there are so many guys, loudspeakers. So if you've got any other points where we can use electromagnet, please don't forget to mention uh, those points on the comment section. Someone needs those points uh, for assistance. But for now, that's what we had guys for Mason African Motives on Engineering Science N1 till we meet again.